Hey there, I'm Becky, and over the next few sessions, I'm going to give you a beginner's crash course into modeling with Aspire. So we're going to be looking at some quick fire examples, we're going to look at lots of different modeling tools, and we're going to learn lots of tips along the way. So why turn to creating your own 3D models? Now, perhaps there is a lack of resource available online. Uh, perhaps you want to cut on your costs in your own business, or perhaps you want to introduce custom 3D carving to open up new clientele. Now, modeling is hard and it isn't hard, but once you know the modeling tools, that's half the battle. Now, I'm not going to lie, you're not going to walk away from this session being able to model the Mona Lisa. However, hopefully these sessions will give you the tools and the know-how to get you inspired and up and running with modeling in Aspire. So let's go into the software. Okay, so looking at some of the models that I've done in the past, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown as to what I think is quite difficult and what can be achieved quite easily. So in my opinion, faces, people and animals are the hardest things to model purely because in terms of faces, we're so used to seeing faces on a daily basis that uh, when you're modelling a face, if something's not quite right, it can appear quite obvious in your model. Uh, with animals, there's lots of uh, details to think about like fur, hair, feathers, muscle definition, that sort of thing. And again, there, there's something that we're quite used to seeing as well. So if something's not quite right, it can be uh, quite obvious as well. But that's not to say it can't be done. It just requires a lot of practice and practice makes perfect. Um, then I think that objects, buildings, that sort of thing are the second hardest. And that's purely because a lot of these sorts of models uh, require you to have the right angles. There's a lot of geometric shapes that we need to get in there. Um, and again, with practice, you can get there. Then I think the kind of easiest things to model are things like cartoons um, and natural things. So cartoons, uh, that's really down to you kind of putting that out there. Uh, people aren't used to seeing that sort of thing. So you can kind of get away with things in, from that respect and in terms of natural things uh, these are what I find the easiest to model because you actually have nature on your side because everything that's natural isn't perfect so uh, you can kind of get away with that. So we won't be able to cover everything that, that's involved in modelling over the next two sessions but hopefully it will help you get started. So we're going to look at this theme of Oktoberfest as our kind of theme for the models that we'll be creating over the next few sessions. Um, and so with this as well, so not only will you get the access to the files that we're going to look at modeling over the next two sessions, but I've also included uh, a 20 piece Oktoberfest model pack as well. Uh, so here's just an example of some of those models. Uh, they're all included and they're going to be as V3Ms as well. So if you aren't using Aspire, you can still have access to those models as they'll be available in V3M format. Right then, so in terms of modelling, some of the things to think about now, when you are modelling, resolution plays a very important part to how good your models look. So some top tips here. So you want to create your model in a space that is slightly bigger than the model you plan to create. Uh, and this enables you to really just retain all of the uh, pixel the pixels inside of your space for your models just to give you a good quality model. So if you compare the two images, we've got the same anchor in each. However, one ha is within a space that's just slightly bigger than the anchor and this is the resultant anchor. This one, we have this big wide space with the anchor. This is the exact same size, just in a bigger job space and you can see the quality difference here. So you really want to kind of just constrain your job space just around the model that you plan to create and also the higher the resolution the better the quality of the model so generally I tend to stick to high or very high modeling resolution you can't go wrong uh, there are two further um, higher resolution settings that you can access uh, using the shift key when you open up the job setup form uh, however I only recommend you do that if you are working with very very large scale uh, models generally you're probably not going to be doing that um, so I'd recommend high or very high here. 
Uh, another top tip before we get started is get to know the modeling tools. So having an understanding of the modeling tools kind of shapes what vectors you need to draw up for the components you want to create. So the ones that we're going to cover over this, uh, the next two sessions is the create shape. So this is where we can take a uh, vector and we assign a shape profile to it. So we're going to look at the two rail sweeps. That's taking two um, open vectors with a cross section vector that we sweep between those two vector rails to create a shape. We can look at the extrude and weave tool. So this is taking a single um, rail vector where we can sweep a cross section or extrude that cross section uh, through that vector rail. And where you have overlaps, you can create this weave effect also. Uh, we've got the turn and spin. So basically take a vector and we can turn it or rotate it or spin it to create a shape. And then also we could look at creating components from bitmaps. And this is perfect for things like textures. One other important thing that we must remember is that the quality of your vectors will have a direct impact on the components that it creates. So you really want to look at minimizing the number of uh, nodes that you've got on your vectors. You really want smooth vectors and you want bezier curves as well to get nice smooth shapes. So looking at the two images, you can see we've got a shape here that just has minimal uh, nodes here we've got nice smooth curves running through those nodes and we've got a nice smooth shape uh, on the other hand we have a shape that has lots of straight points we've got you know the occasional bezier uh, there but generally we've got lots of points there and you can see that's actually being reflected in the shape that that's creating we've got no, we do not have a smooth shape there so you want to aim for you know, minimal nodes, smooth vectors, bezier curves. So in this session, we're going to look at modeling up three different things. We're going to look at creating a barrel. We're going to look at creating a pretzel. And we're going to look at creating a traditional uh, gingerbread heart. So let's just jump straight into Aspire and we'll get started with the barrel. Okay then, so we're going to go and create a new file. So here we're going to work with nine inches by nine inches and a material thickness of got 0.92. Uh, we're going to set our material uh, Z0 on the material surface, X, Y, lower left, and we're working with a very high modeling resolution. So that's what we're going to use there. And then we'll go ahead and press OK. So generally, when you start a modeling project, you either can create vectors on the fly or quite typically you'll have imagery uh, to work from or reference material so I've just done uh, a Google search so some of your friends here are Google images Pinterest uh, sites that ha have royalty free images uh, and you can go ahead and just search for what it is you like just to get a general idea visually of what it is you want to make now I really like the barrel that we've got here so I can see it's like two simple circles we've got a border there we've got grooves uh, around that barrel there and we've got some kind of wood texture which we can see in the actual barrel itself so I've got a good idea of kind of the shapes that I need to make now this is quite a simple model so I don't actually need to bring in an image to to create this but I can always refer back to this uh, whilst I am modeling up the part so I need to start by drawing out two circles. So I'm going to draw out a circle. We'll go with kind of uh, around eight inches. So again, I'm still just trying to stick within my space as close as I can. And then we'll go with a border here. So around 7.5 looks good. So there's my border. So we'll just close that out. Now I need to create those ridges on the edge of the barrel. So I'm just going to go into the polyline tool. Now the way I'm going to model this is I want to have these ridges kind of recessed. So if I just draw a single line, I can make use of the extrude tool uh, whereby I create a single line and then I have a cross section that I can then use to extrude that shape. So I need to create a negative uh, vector here for my negative shape that we're going to extrude so I'll show you a quick tip so we're at the center line here so I'm only going to draw half of this so I'll just kind of come out 
come in at an angle so something like this and then we'll come over to the halfway point like that and then if I wanted to tweak that a bit I could go into node edit whereby I could just nudge those over slightly so it's something like that and then I could go in with that and then we could say control shift and H and that will create a copy uh, horizontally about the center line we could take both of those and we could just join them like so and then I could perhaps go into node edit mode if I think that's too big then I'll show you something cool here so we're going to select these nodes on this side shift and select these nodes on that side then press H on the keyboard that will bring up a mirror line and then using the arrow keys I can just shift those uh, across and you can see it's doing that in a mirror formation you can also do it to just these as well so we'll just make that a little bit like that okay so something like that looks okay so now i need to create a copy of these going around the actual barrel itself so we want to kind of go perhaps in a clock formation so we'll have 12 notches there so if we go over into the circle array, uh, we want to take the rotation center. And if I double click on this point here, it puts the rotation center in the center of my job, which is super handy. And I need to put in the number of items 12. We're going to do a total angle 360, copy that. And you can see it's created those copy, copies for me there. Right then, so I have all the vectors I need to start modeling. So let's go over and we'll tile our windows and we'll go into the modeling tab. So before we create our models, what we should do actually is create a layer. So we're gonna add in a new layer and we're just gonna call this one components so that all of our components can go, our component grayscales can actually go onto this layer. Whilst we're here, we may as well change this and we'll just call this one vectors like so and we'll make the components layer the active layer right and so we're going to start using this vector here and we're just going to create a very basic shape so we're going to go into the create shape form we're going to use a flat plane and we're just going to make that 0.4 high so it's just going to give us a flat raised shape and we'll call this one the base press apply and you can see how that looks awesome Okay, so we're going to say start a new component. Okay, so now I want to create the border. So we're going to take both of these vectors. So we're going to create a shape that goes in between these two vectors. So I want this kind of cone shape here, whereby we're going to look at limiting the height of that. So we're going to kind of flatten it off so it doesn't come out to a point, but we're going to have a flat uh, top, but we're going to have angled edges. And that's going to hopefully give us that shape that we need for the barrel border. So I'm going to limit that to 0 0.05. So these numbers, I'm not just making them up on the fly. I have actually worked this file. So I'm just kind of giving you the kind of what worked here. Okay, so there's our border. So you can see we've got a nice shape. We've got a little bit of an angle there. This is extremely high. So let's just merge that in. So that we're blending that in with the model below it. Uh, and that's perfect. Okay, love what we've got there. So we'll call this one border. Okay, we'll go ahead, press apply, and then we'll just close out. Okay, so we're halfway there now. So now what we want to do is we want to take all of those notches. So I'm just going to just drag my mouse up, but then I'm just going to deselect the uh, circles there. And then just press G just to group all of those notches just so it's easier for me to select them. With those selected, we're going to go into the extrude tool. So this is where we take... Um, each one of these lines and then extrude a shape along those lines that being this shape here so first we need to say use selection that's going to turn all of those vectors into drive rails and where there we need to select a cross section so this cross section we're going to select we're just going to go ahead and uncheck the weave we're not weaving here we're just going to go ahead and press apply and we can see that those notches have been added in and you can really start to see that shape is really kind of coming to its own so here yeah, we're just going to call these the recesses and we'll press apply and then we can close out okay so one last thing to do for the barrel so you can see uh, we've got some real cool shapes made really easily and quickly so for the barrel we want to create that kind of wood texture so we're going to go and import a bitmap here. 
Now, as we're already in the modeling tab, we can make use of this option here to create a component from selected or imported bitmap. So we're going to click on that and then locate our file. So you can see I've got this wood texture that I've just took from Google and then I could go ahead and press open and it will already convert that to a texture component for me so you can see how that looks there so we'll just f9 that to put that in the center and then we'll take that and we're just going to increase that just so it fills the inside of our barrel okay so you can see we've got quite a dense uh, component there so what we need to do is we need to look at reducing the size we also need to look and think about reduce uh, ordering our component tree so we're just going to rename this one and we're just going to call this one texture and then we'll just come out there and then what we'll do is we'll take our texture uh, and then if we just uncheck the recess and uncheck the border we can see how that's sitting on top of the base shape so we want it on top of the base shape so we want to move that down the list here we also want to look at uh, cropping this as well so we're going to take that we're going to hold down shift we're going to select the inner circle we're going to use this option here to clear area of selected component outside selected vectors if we click on that it's just going to clear everything outside so that's exactly what we want there Okay, so we have quite a bit of height in our model, so we could look at decreasing that. So going to the properties here, okay, so it's at 0.2, let's just make that say 0.1. Okay, so we're just reducing that. And then we could look at applying a smooth over, so we're just smoothing that texture out a little. So we'll close out, and we'll use the smooth option. Okay, and then what we'll do is will smooth it out. I'm leaving, I'm not going to preserve the transparency here. I'd like that to kind of bleed out. So we're just going to smooth it like so. And you can see perhaps we could do a little bit more. So something like that looks okay. So we'll just go ahead and okay that. And then we could just put our border back on and then our recesses and there is our barrel and that's the barrel done so you can see we've got quite um quite a nice looking model there and that took us you know quite just under 10 minutes to create that so nice easy one uh, another top tip for you if you go to right click on the level we can insert a new level and then here we could use this option this is my favorite button in the modeling tools that's create component from visible model and what it does it's, it's like it takes a picture of what's in your uh, composite model and if we just undraw the level one we just have one single component that represents uh, all of those models that we made there and then the beauty of this for aspire users is that we can now uh, right click and we can use this option here to export this as a 3d clip file okay and then we can just call that one barrel and we'll all have we'll always have access to that and you can locate that um, and bring that into your clip art tab if you wanted to so you can easily access those models. Okay, so that was our first model, so easy peasy. So that was an object type model. So we're gonna look at modeling another type object where we're gonna look at the famous German pretzel. Uh, and in this, we're gonna look at how we can use the weave tool to create the weave effect in Aspire. Okay, so back in Aspire, we'll create a new file. So this time we're gonna go with six by six by 0.375, working with a very high modeling resolution there. So we're maximizing the amount of pixels that we've got in our space. And then we could go ahead and press okay. So for the pretzel, um, what I'd like to do is, well, what I need to do is get um, reference imagery to work from. So I had a look online, so I've gone to uh, Pixabay. So this is a site that has predominantly um, free images that you can use. So they're free for commercial use and uh, that sort of things. And I found this pretzel, so I've got a hold of that. So we'll go in and we'll import that into our session. So we're going to import a bit map and then we're going to go over into our folder so I've got that image there and this is the uh, image that we're going to use so it looks uh, fairly um, complicated but it's actually really quite easy it's just a case of us um, looking at creating a weave effect here to create an overlap so you can see where this part of the pretzel is going underneath this part is going 
over this part's going over here and that's going underneath and wrapping back over there so for this straight away i'm thinking okay we could use the extrude and weave tool to do that and that's why we create a single uh, rail vector and then we create uh, a cross section or a series of cross sections that we can use to extrude through that vector to create our shape so we're going to do that so we're going to go into the draw polyline okay so we're going to start uh, our line somewhere around here okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create points exactly where i need to go so kind of there here we'll go at the bottom there in the center uh over here so here we're just trying to kind of mirror those positions so it's, we're not being too specific here but we're trying to, we want to just hit those points where um, we want to create those curves, okay? And then we'll kind of finish that somewhere around here. And we'll right click just to come out. Okay, and we'll just press N on the keyboard to put that into node edit mode. And then we'll do a simple uh, selection there. So we've got a multi selection there, just dragging that mouse across. And then I'm going to press S on the keyboard to smooth that out. And then all we do then is just simply work at our handles. We want to create nice, smooth transitions between each of those nodes just to get a really nice shape there. So just increasing that. Um, and then perhaps we'll just move that over and then just nudge that over here and over this side let's just take that and we'll just move that over something like that uh, and then we'll take this handle here bring that down so we've got a nice curve going there and we'll take this handle and we'll just move that down but then we'll take that handle up perhaps move that over a little nudge this handle up just to raise that and perhaps move that over there so it's just a lot of a lot of tweaking uh, involved when you node edit your vectors there okay so i think i'm happy with what we've got there uh, so then what we can do now is we can look at creating our cross sections so what cross sections do we need to create? What shapes are they going to be? So we want them rounded the pretzel generally is quite a rounded kind of tube kind of shape so we're going to look at creating ovals so we're going to start off by using the ellipse shape okay so we're just going to we'll just draw our cross sections somewhere around here so we'll go kind of something like that to begin with and we'll just close out there and we'll press n on the keyboard to put that into node edit mode so our cross sections need to be open vectors so we're going to d to delete that span and D to delete that span so we've just got half of the cross section there and it's this shape that will be extruded along the vector now you can see we've got uh, a varying um, width for our pretzel so we have quite a large width here however over here it's actually quite small and then here is kind of in the middle between this width and this width here so ideally we should look at making further cross sections to reflect those different widths as well so we're just going to take this one that we've already created control and alt i'm just going to drag that along and then we're just going to shrink that down ever so slightly so we'll create kind of medium shape and then control and alt and then we'll create a much smaller shape over here so something like that okay so we've got three different shapes so kind of like um, large middle and small okay so with those we're going to extrude them across uh, the rail that we've got here so if we tile our windows we can go uh, the, into our modeling tab we've got the 3d view in view here and we're going to use this tool here so this is creating a shape by extruding along one or more center line vectors so if we click on that, that's going to open that up. So the first thing we need to do is select our vector that we want to extrude other vectors along. Uh, so that's this vector here, and we're going to say use selection, okay? So we can see we've got a start point here, and this is the direction of our rail. And we can see that judging by those arrows, okay? So you have to kind of go in closer just to see those arrows. Uh, the bitmap's kind of obscuring that at the moment. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we can then apply 
cross section. So we're going to take the smaller one here to begin with. So starting off with the smaller one, and I'll apply that to the start and the end here. Then what we can do is we can go in, well, if we just go ahead and just press apply as it is now, we can just see what that looks like. Okay, it's not quite what we want. So first off, we also want the weave here where we, the vector actually crosses over each other. So we're going to use the weave under and over at crossings and then press apply. And you can see we're starting to get that weave effect. Okay. And also see that, um, that we're starting here and the weave is actually going over and then under here, which is actually a little bit different to our image that we've got there. So what we can do is we can look at altering the start point. So if we just reset that and then if we just close out and if we go to node edit mode, we're going to make the start point over here because we want this part to go over and this part to go under. And then we can just go back in and we can just go in there, say use selection, uh, and then we'll just take our small cross section there. And we can see the start point is now here. So hopefully this actually goes over there and then under over here. And if we press apply, we can see that's actually happening there. But obviously we've only got one width there, so we need to alter that. So to add in different widths, we just simply use our cross section. Or we could say, do you know what? I'd like that to start uh, getting bigger somewhere around here. Uh, and then uh, we'll put in another one over there. And then we want the really large one to come in kind of over here and then over there as well. And so if we go ahead and press apply, we can kind of see how it's looking. Okay, so it's not bad. We've got that kind of basic pretzel shape. I'm kind of happy with that. That's the shape that we're seeing in the actual bitmap itself. If you wanted to, if we wanted to add a bit more thickness uh, up here, for instance, we could just say, okay, let's just add in another large bitmap there, and you'll see that our rails are actually color coordinated according to the actual profiles here. So we could add in another large one there as well and press apply. So we're just extending the how where it's large, um, the, the actual large width that's flowing along this extrusion. Okay, so I'm happy with what we've got there. So we'll just go ahead and give that a name. So we'll just call that one pretzel and then press apply and then we can simply close out there. So to finish this off, we're going to get the texture from our bitmap. So we're going to take our bitmap. So this time, rather than import it, because we've already got it here, we're just going to go over to the same icon here and we're just going to create a component from this bitmap. And when we click on that, you can see that it's done that there. And you can see there's a lot of noise in that bitmap there. So we could look at smoothing that out. So to do that, we're going to go into our texture. We're going to go into the smooth tool. Okay, and then we're just going to perhaps reduce that ever so slightly. I'm happy with that. So we could just simply go ahead and press OK. Okay, and then what we can do is we can simply crop our texture to our pretzel model. So last time we saw how we can crop a texture to a vector we can also crop to components. So we're going to take this texture, shift and select the pretzel, and then use this option here to clear everything outside of that component. And there we have our finished pretzel. So that's pretty much it. Uh, and then obviously you can go on to smooth it even more if you wanted to, but I feel like we've got a good representation there. And so again, let's just insert a new level and then we'll use this option here to create a copy of our uh, composite model there. And then we can just uh, rename that one and call that one pretzel. And then again, we can right click, export that as a piece of 3D clip art into our folder. We'll save that there and then we can access that um, and bring that into other sessions of Aspire. So now let's take a look at modeling a traditional gingerbread heart. Now this is actually quite a cute model because you can use this for things like Valentine's and anniversaries. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so I'm drawing my inspiration for this next model from these beautiful gingerbread hearts. I think these are gorgeous. I think that these in wood would actually make some real nice, cute 
gifts for loved ones and if you coloured them up just as colourful as they are here I think they would look stunning so some of the things we're going to look at we're going to look at creating a piping effect for the border of our heart shape we're going to look at using the two rail sweep now we can copy vet copy components along vectors we're going to look at creating these piping kind of shapes so we'll look at using the new create shape tool whereby we're going to use a custom vector to create that shape uh, and then we'll look at adding in some text and some texture in there uh, to complete the gingerbread okay so back into a session of aspire so I've already got a session open, I've got some vectors to help me out which I'll show you shortly but the first thing that we need to do is draw out our heart shape. So we're going to go into the polyline tool. Okay, so I'm just going to click somewhere here and then somewhere like that and then we're just going to go to the bottom there, snap into that centre line like so. Right click there and you're probably thinking that doesn't look like a heart. Well if we put it into node edit mode we can start to make it look like a heart. So S to smooth that out and then what we can do then is we can just pull on that handle and then we can take this handle here bring that out like so and you can start to see we've got that shape coming through there so idea is we just want nice smooth curves going through okay so i think that's okay so we'll take that Control shift and h on the keyboard and then we shall select the original one and we're just going to join them like so so now we've got one um, solid vector there and that represents our heart Okay, so we're just going to take that and we're just going to offset that outwards by a quarter of an inch just to create a somewhat of a border there. And so the idea is we're going to create a, a component that would represent uh, one single part of our piping that we're going to look at copying along this vector that we've created here. And so to do that and to help speed things along, I've actually included a layer here uh, with some extra vectors. So these would have took a few minutes just to draw up uh, and they represent various different things. So this vector here, okay, so if we take a look at node edit mode, it's all it consists of is this kind of curved shape and we've got a similar one running underneath. That's going to represent our piping. And the way that we're going to model the pipe in is using the two rail sweep. So we've got two vectors that represent our rails. And we're going to have a cross section that's going to be kind of wibbly wobbly uh, to create the uh, kind of undulations that you'd expect in pipe in. Okay, you're probably thinking, why is it so big? It doesn't matter because it actually scales. Uh, we'll scale that in between uh, each of those vectors. Right then, so um, we'll probably look now at uh, creating those models so we'll just tile our windows and then we'll go over into the modeling tab okay so the first model that we're going to create we're just going to create a base shape so we're going to take this vector here we're going to go in and create a base shape and we'll go with a flat shape here we'll set the height of that to an eighth of an inch and we'll just call this one base and then go ahead and press apply so you can see that there and then we can close out so again I'd like to create that kind of gingerbread texture so let's go over and create a component from an imported bitmap so here I've just got a picture of a gingerbread man okay so we're just going to shrink that down okay, so it's very large at the moment and I just want it to just fill the center of our heart so we'll just stretch that out Okay, stretch that out again. Okay, so something like that looks okay. And then we'll press shift on the base and we'll just crop that out. And then there is our texture. What we want to do is we just want to smooth that out. Okay, so something like that. We'll okay that. We'll also look at just uh, decreasing like that very shallow 0.05 so we've just got uh, just a hint of a kind of texture there okay so I'm happy with that so now we can move on and think about the actual piping so for the piping we're going to use a two rail sweep now before we do that we're just going to organize our level so we're just going to call this one the base and then we're going to right click and we're going to insert a new level so we'll just uh, switch off the base level for the time being, make that level the active level and we'll just rename that and we'll just call this one piping 
um, and then we could go ahead and then create our component in that level. So we're going to take these two vectors here, we're going to say use selection, you can see that the rails are pointing in the same direction, uh, so that's good, so it means that when we take our cross section, this leg will join onto the red line, this leg will join onto the green line and they'll travel both in the same direction until they meet at the end. We want to scale our cross sections with the width and then we could simply go ahead and press apply and you can see we've got this nice swirly pattern there that's going to represent our piping so we're just going to call this one single piping here and then press apply and then we can close out. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take that pipe and we're going to go over to our heart and we're going to use this option here whereby we're going to look at uh, creating copies along this vector. Okay, so we're just going to put in a distance of 0.2 to begin with just to see what happens. We'll go ahead and press OK. Okay, and we can see uh, the effect of that there. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's not too bad. Uh, we're actually just going to undo that, okay, because everything's kind of adding at the moment. So we'll just uh, close out and undo what we've just done there. And then what we need to do is actually we need to set the combine mode of that to merge. Okay, so then we'll go back in and then we'll copy that along. So everything should actually blend together then rather than add on top. Okay, so you can see it's all blending in. So we've got a nice kind of piping effect there, but it's kind of going to get funny in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at just taking everything on this side. Okay, so we don't want those vectors. So we're just going to deselect those vectors. I'm just going to take that and that one over here as well. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And we're just going to delete them. Okay, so that's deleted those. And then we're just going to take all of these copies. Okay, and we're just going to group them like so. And then we can take that, Control Shift H, to take that over to the other side. And then we can take one of these, press Control, uh, to bring that into the center there, oh, to create a copy even. And then we're just going to kind of just fudge the, um, the bottom here. So we're just gonna follow that along and then we're just going to shrink that. So the reason why uh, it kind of changed shape is because it's just following along the vector. So the, the component actually kind of turns with the vector. And in this case, we'd rather just have a mirrored copy. Uh, that would look nicer. So that's what we're gonna do there. And then with that, we'll say Control Shift and H on that one as well. So you can see the bottom's looking pretty nice there. And then we could even take those and just say Control Shift V to get a copy up to the top, whereby we can then take that like so and we can just bring that down into position and then perhaps actually we just we could even just use just the one there or we could even just grab that other one and just put that over here like so just to fill that out okay so that's looking pretty nice there so then what we'll do is we'll just group all of those uh, piping components together. So we'll just group them uh, and we'll just switch off that single component there. And then we'll start to look at how everything's coming in together as a whole composition. Okay, so we'll switch on uh, the actual base as well. Okay, so the piping level is actually adding on top. So what we need to do is set the combine mode of that to merge. And I'm actually going to lose it because it's merging into our base. But that's not a problem because we can uh, double click onto our the actual level itself and that will open up the properties for the level whereby we can input a, a base height here. So let's go with a base height of 0.14 and we can see that it's starting to come through there. Let's go with 1.5 just to clear that texture there. Uh, and that's not too bad, okay? So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to close out and I'd like to take our border there and create a vector border around it. And then I'd like to take that border, uh, just press U to ungroup it. And then we're just going to take uh, this vector here, and we're going to delete it, and then we're going to take this vector, we're going to select these components here, and we're just going to crop them. Okay, so it's 
telling us that we're going to we'll be baking our components if we need to do that so we're just going to cancel out and we're just going to do this on a separate basis so we're going to crop that one out okay and then we're going to take our base and we're going to crop that one out also okay so that, that way we still retain the individual parts rather than baking them into one individual component okay so that's not too bad so there we have it so I could look at increasing that level height a little bit more so let's try 0.16 just to raise that up wonderful okay so we'll just put that in Z so now we can start adding in our decoration. So we'll close out, we're going to add in a new level. Uh, we're going to rename that one, we'll just call that one details. We'll set the combined mode of this to merge so it blends in. I'm also going to add in that base height again. So we'll just go with 0.16 in there. So it's already in place. Uh, so we're going to add in some text. So we're going to go into the drawing tab and we're going to draw in some text. Okay, so I've got this nice calligraphy font there and we could st start to type in uh, some words. So ich liebe um, and then we'll put das and then we'll go down a line and we'll put Oktoberfest. So that is I love Oktoberfest. We can close out and then we can just take that as F9 that to put that in the center and then we'll just break our text block into lines and we could look at bringing that up like so and then we could take that perhaps shrink it down a little maybe rotate it slightly like that. Uh, there's our text. And then we could look at some of the individual piping. So we're going to use the draw star. I'm going to take an eight point star here and we're just going to draw that out like so. And then in node edit mode, I'm just going to smooth everything like that. So there's our shape. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to apply this profile cross section to this shape. So we're going to go into the modeling tab to go into the create shape tool so uh, a new feature in version 11 is the ability to use a custom vector profile so that's my profile here and then i could go ahead and press apply and hopefully that will create this kind of gem piping effect so that's pretty good that's exactly what i want there okay so we're just going to call this one gem piping uh, and then apply that and then we'll just close out and I'll just take that and then we'll take a copy by pressing control and then we can just shrink that down something like that so just creating some cute little uh, pipe in here just randomly position that over there and then we could just look at adding in some leaves so here I've already got some vectors pre-drew out so I've got two vectors and a profile Okay, so that's the profile, similar to what we've seen earlier in an example. Uh, and we're going to look at using the two rail sweep. So we're going to come over here and to take those two vectors, turn them into drive rails, take our cross section, press apply, and we'll just call this one leaf. Uh, press apply there, and then we'll just close out. And then we'll take that, take a copy by pressing control, and then we could just look at shrinking that down. So it's something like this. And we could take another copy and put one over here like that. Then we could press Control and H just to flip that and create a copy whereby we can then take that and then just look at perhaps rotating it. Could even shrink that down and um, we'll shrink this one down as well there's just lots of little tweaks here Do you know, in hindsight i needn't have uh, created a second lot here so i'm actually going to delete those and then we'll just take those and we'll just copy that over here like so so always take advantage of the tools that we have available in the software just to make uh, your life easier perhaps we'll just put that in v just to flip that vertically so we have something that looks like this okay so there's uh, our gem piping with our leaves and we could take our text as well uh, and we could just apply a simple uh, domed profile to that just to create our text as if it was written in that um, 
is a pipe in so we'll call that one text uh, and press apply now one of the thing I wanted to show you here is uh, in the preview for our components we can actually uh, color them in so for example if we take our single pipe in and go to the properties what we can do is we could go in and alter the colors of how of what we're actually seeing here in our preview which is really good because it kind of helps you to demonstrate um, how you might paint this up so if you go to appearance we could say we want to use a solid color and then in here we could say we wanted to give that a really light blue color for instance and then that does that there for you and you could do the same for like the piping so we could take that and we could say we want to use a solid color and we wanted to give that a very light pink for example and then we could take the leaves and we could say we wanted to do a solid colour there with a nice green colour and then we could take the text and we could again use a solid colour perhaps you'd want, you'd want to do this, paint this up white uh, and that's pretty much that. So we've looked at lots of different modeling techniques there. So we'll take a look at the file that you're going to receive. Okay, so you can see that there. I've also included some holes if you wanted to actually cut that out uh, and have hanging holes for your hearts, just as uh, we've seen in the images, those inspirational images at the start of this session. Uh, I've also included alternative text. So I love you more than cookies if you wanted to do that. Uh, and everything is kind of modeled up here as well. So if we uh, go in and just uncheck all of those levels, you can see we've got um, just a heart on its own. Uh, we've got the heart with the texture. If you wanted the texture, we've got the heart with the uh, Ishaliba Das Oktoberfest text. And then we've got the I Love You More Than Cookies text as well. And so with each model that you're happy with, again, it's always a good idea to export that as a 3D uh, clip file. And we can locate that into our folder, press save. And if you go into your clip art tab and then add in that folder you'll see that they'll be displayed here within our view there for you to easily just bring into future sessions. Okay, so that completes this beginner's guide to modeling in the software. So we've looked at all sorts of things from the importance of your vectors. We've looked at three different examples and we've looked at lots of the modeling tools. So in my session tomorrow, we're going to take all of the things that we've learned today and we're going to dig a little bit deeper, whereby we're going to look at some more complex shapes and we're going to look at how we can take all of the models that we'll be modeling over uh, these two sessions and arrange them into one big composition. Okay then, so if you've got any questions or I haven't got round to your questions or you're watching this at a later date, then please just leave them in the comments and I'll get to those as soon as possible. So up next, we've got Bill Young from ShopBot who's going to be sharing with us some inspirational projects that he's been working on over the last 18 months. Now, if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please hit the subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. Thank you for watching and happy making. Thank you.